Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to discuss the genetic variation and susceptibility to prion disease in Audad here in Texas. So Audad are also known as Barberry sheep. Their scientific name is Amotragus lervia. I'm, throughout this presentation, I'll refer to Audad as Audad as well as Amotragus lervia. Um, Audad are native to North Africa, ranging from Morocco to Egypt. They were first introduced into Texas into two counties in 1950. A couple years later, Audad were introduced into Paladero Canyon to provide additional hunting opportunities. We do note that these individuals were sourced from the Hearst Ranch um, located in Central California. To date, the largest population sizes are in the Trans-Pecos region of Texas. A previous study done in 20, early 2020 examined the mitochondrial uh, DNA of Audad in their native range, specifically in Algeria. And so what DeRoche et al. found uh, were two clades. In blue is the Mediterranean clade, also referred to as Amotragus lervia lervia. And in orange here is the Saharan clade, also referred to as Amotragus lervia serensis. So with this paper, they found two um, uh, different clades of Audad using the cytochrome B gene. And so I just, uh, Amotragus lervia lervia and the subspecies Saharensis are two of six subspecies described based on morphology and distribution. There's four other Audad uh, subspecies, Ornata, which not much is known distribution-wise and morphology-wise, and then uh, Fasini, Blaney, and Agassi, um, which in 2000 were synonymized by the IUCN, um, basically meaning that all three of these are most likely the same subspecies. So the big question here is what do we have in the US, specifically in Texas? So given the genetic variation in the mitochondrial genome um, noted by DeRoche et al. in 2020, and the multiple introductions into Texas, the goal of this study was to one, new cytochrome B, also known as site B, and displacement loop, also known as control region or D loop, to determine the level of genetic variation of all dead populations here in Texas, as well as New Mexico and California. Uh, secondly, to use the prion protein exon 3 gene, which I'll refer to as PRMP from here on out, to detect variation as well as potential susceptibility to scrapie among wild sheep. This um, includes Audad as well as bighorn sheep here in Texas. And then three, to combine both of these data sets and determine if Audad haplotypes infer susceptibility or resistance to prion diseases such as scrapie. So we collected over 170 samples um, through a variety of methods uh, live captures with Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, routine animal husbandry uh, through Fossil Rim, Fossil Rim Wildlife Center, hunter harvest, removals, and destructive tissue loans through natural history collections. We also amplified and sequenced cytochrome B, D-loop, and PRMP, used a couple different phylogenetic methods, and finally calculated genetic distance values. Um, this map shows a geographic sampling of all the Audad in this study. In the north, we have Paladuro Canyon uh, State Park as well as Caprock Canyon State Park. In the east, we have uh, Fawcett WMA as well as Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. Uh, in the hill country area, we have Kerr WMA as well as Love Creek Preserve. And then in West Texas, various mountain ranges in the Trans-Pecos region. So to get right into the results, this is a phylogenetic tree using the cytochrome B gene of all individuals in this study. Um, the asterisk represents Bayesian support, um, so posterior probability support, support greater than or equal to 95%. The number to the right of the slash represents the bootstrap values of uh, the maximum likelihood methodology. And so as you can see, all nodes of, the, of this tree are supported with both Bayesian and maximum likelihood. Um, the first clade, clade one, may be potentially represented by the subspecies Serensis or Blaney. I will um, explain further in the discussion why we're including Blaney here in the results. Clade two 
uh, may potentially be represented by the subspecies Lervia. And between these two clades, there is a genetic divergence of 5.24%. Um, it's important to note that although we collapsed the uh, clades here as well as here, um, there is variation among all of these individuals in both clades. However, we collapsed to um, the last node that had support. And so um, this line is not indicative of a lack of variation. It's just where we had support. Uh, this is a cytochrome B gene, a uh, cytochrome B gene uh, tree with uh, identical sequences removed. And so basically we see the same thing. We have clade one here, potentially represented by the subspecies Serensis or Blaine, as well as clade two, which may be represented by the subspecies Lervia. Again, all, all nodes are supported with both metho methodologies and there is a genetic divergence of 5.23%. This is the D-loop tree of ODAD individuals, of select ODAD individuals, excuse me. And um, as you can see, clade one here um, is potentially represented by the subspecies Serensis as well as Blaine. Clade two, again, is potentially represented by the subspecies Lervia. And it's important to note that between these two clades, the genetic divergence is about 12.6%. This is because D-loop is known to evolve uh, more rapidly than cytochrome B. So this was to be expected. Um, however, the genetic distances of both site B and D-loop are quite a much higher um, than you would expect uh, within ungulate species such as Ovis, Capra, um, also uh, other closely related ungulates um, that are closely related to ODAD. And so if we compare the cytochrome B tree to the D-loop tree, um, you might notice that the branch lengths are a little off between the clades. And so in cytochrome B tree, um, you have clade one, where the branch length of clade one is much shorter than the branch length of clade two. However, you see the offset pattern in the D-loop tree. Now, this would give the impression that these trees are evolving at different rates which can't be so uh, because they're both mitochondrial markers. And so what we're really seeing here, the fact that the D-loop branch of clade one is so much longer, it's actually represented by seven indel events where we have um, different areas of the gene that have insertions and deletions throughout um, the, the marker. And so there's one 15 base pair insertion one 10 base pair deletion, several one base pair insertions, um, a five base pair insertion, et cetera, throughout um, the gene. And these are, uh, these are real occurrences within this marker, which is why it gives the appearance that these uh, genes may be evolving um, at different rates. And so um, again, this is the sampling map where we obtained all of our ODAD throughout the duration of this study. Um, the locations in blue are represented by uh, Amotragus lervia lervia, and the locations in orange are represented by the subspecies Serensis or Blaine. It's important to note that each location um, that is orange also had the subspecies Lervia there. The only location that only contained contained um, individuals of the subspecies Serensis or Blaine was number six, which is Fossil Rim Wildlife Center. And we'll get a little bit more into that in the discussion. So between the two um, putative subspecies of ODAD, as well as bighorn sheep, we wanted to compare the prion protein gene um, to determine uh, the level of susceptibility as well as to see if there's any differences um, in variation. While we didn't see any, vari <laughs> any variation, um, all ODAD and bighorn sheep have a genotype of an alanine at codon 136, an arginine at codon 154, and a glutamine at codon 171, meaning that a, a genotype of A136, R154, and Q174 one uh, is indicative of moderate susceptibility to scrapie based on uh, studies performed with uh, 
domestic sheep and goats. So overall, uh, we detected two putative subspecies of Audad in Texas using both site B and displacement loop. Uh, the more common haplotype was Amotragus lervia, or, or yeah, more common uh, subspecies was Amotragus lervia lervia, which was found all throughout Texas, New Mexico, and California. Um, further, the more rare haplogroup represented by Blaine sirensis was only found at a couple locations in conjunction with the subspecies Lervia. The reason why we're including Blaine Eye in these analyses is that Fossil Room Wildlife Center has a stud book that traces their original population founders um, back to Sudan, and it specifically notes that the subspecies used was Blaine Eye. Now, um, there could be two hypotheses here. One, the stud book could be wrong, which is highly unlikely. Fossil Ram Wildlife Center is accredited by the Association of Zoos and Aquariums, as well as several other zoological standards. Um, so the more plausible hypothesis is that Blainine serensis, although they differ in morphology, um, they are extremely similar in their mitochondrial genome. And also um, previous distribution data does suggest that their populations do overlap some. Um, further, with the PRMP analyses, we found low variation of Audad and bighorn sheep um, within the PRMP gene. This is compared to other coilus as well as domestic ova, ovis and capra. Um, this low variation has also been seen in axis as well as capriolus, so this is not unheard of. Um, Further, bighorn sheep and Audad have identical codons at 136, 154, and 171, which indicates a moderate susceptibility to scrapie. There are about five genotypes that differ, differ from uh, high susceptibility to scrapie to low susceptibility of scrapie. And so this one is right in the middle there. Uh, and Texas populations of both Audad and bighorn sheep, the sequence similarity is 100%. So, to date, between the two potential subspecies of Audad, there are no apparent differences um, in their sequence data, meaning that both subspecies have the same susceptibility to scrapie um, as the other. So overall, given the similar habitat, as well as some patchery of both bighorn and Audad in the Trans-Pecos region of Texas, and the fact that they are equally susceptible to scrapie, uh, may indicate that Audad may serve as a disease vector to bighorn sheep. So future directions are to incorporate samples from the Davis Mountains, the Glass Mountains, and other areas, evaluate population structures such as FST values using AMOVA as well as um, the program Arlequin, um, potentially locate historical data from the Hearst Ranch, the Bronx Zoo, um, the, even the Smithsonian, and further examine RADSEQ data for both uh, potential Audad subspecies. I would just like to thank Dr. Dittmar, Dewey, and Brandon for their friendship, for their help with this research. Um, thank you to the Bradley Lab, the Conway Coalition, Texas Parks and Wildlife Department, Texas Bighorn Society, the Nature Conservancy, Balsa Rim Wildlife Center, as well as private individuals um, for their help with this research. And here's my contact information in